Good evening and welcome to Sunny Dunfries for the final game of the Premiership season. Queen of the South will host Hibs here today on Jake Eastwood Day, who after 273 appearances will play his final game between the sticks. And as the final member of the promotion team still at the club, today truly marks the end of an era here at Palmerston Park. Hey guys, I'm Aussie Villain and welcome back to Queen of the South. It's Season 6, Episode 14, the final episode of Season 6. And today it is, uh, we're going to end the season against Hibs. It will be a farewell appearance for Jake Eastwood. What a servant he has been. And then we will be uh, having our end of season awards, our goal of the season competition, and uh, all sorts of fun stuff like that. But yeah, it is the, the final game for Jake Eastwood. He's played 273, 74 games for the club. Um... I forget which one it is, if he's going to make his 274th or if he's played 274. But he's been with us basically since uh, the start. We signed him. He was a signing, but he's, he's played with us every game or been with us every season anyway. And he's the last player to depart of the original. So that's that's obviously the end of an year. It's a little bit sad, but the time had come. We'd replaced him and he is he's, he's not going to play anymore. So it's best for everybody if we just uh, if he just goes on the pastures new which in his case is reading now there are two games to catch you up on on the field we had, yet we hadn't con uh, confirmed our champions league football rangers needed to win it out we needed to lose out and uh, funnily enough our next game was against rangers so let's see if we could uh, get things confirmed there soldier gave us the lead on the hour mark before Bernard won possession and Johnson got our second against his former club. So there we go, Champions League football confirmed. We were really, really comfortable in this game. You can see Rangers, I mean, could you ever have imagined Rangers would have an XG like that against us? Uh, it shows how far we've come as a club. Now, second half, I went back to how we were playing against Celtic with the in inside forwards and uh, and a striker up top, which was Suljic coming off the bench. And it looked it looked decent. It looked like it could work. We had Johnson playing as an inside forward on the right-hand side, which is where he got his goal from. And... It worked. It just seemed to work. So that in mind, we played Hearts next. We started like that. And uh, well, let's see how that went. Lutzi picked out Bermudez to give us a halftime lead. Sonny Harding got our second early in the second half. But 10 men Hearts pulled one back. Before Magliori won possession and Lutzi sent Suljic in to seal the points. So again, we played quite well on this one. We went with a number 10 instead of a DM just because of who we were playing. And again, it's a game I thought, you know, we probably should be beating them. We had to take Shakir Omar off early. He had a bit of a knee problem, but he will play today. And uh, yes, yeah, Soljic came on and, uh, and did well. So it's all looking on the up and up. Now we go and have a quick look here. With second placed and therefore uh, Champions League football secured, albeit qualifiers, we've got our initial budget, 225 grand a week, 14, essentially 14 and a half million pounds to spend in the summer. We are going to have some fun with that next episode in the summer transfer special. We will be able to get the bigger name players in. I mean, as funny as it sounds, we might actually still struggle because wage, it depends what our wage, our maximum wage is going to be. But for example, I went to have a look at what we could do to uh, sign Shakir Omar when we got that budget in and Atalanta wants 16 million for him. So to get those sort of top quality players in, 14 million is huge but money compared to what we've had previously but it's still we're still going to struggle to buy the finish and we've found this every time we've done this impossible dream we're still going to really struggle to buy the finished product we are still going to have to buy prospects and and develop them ourselves albeit we can get sort of better prospects so that's uh we don't have to look quite as hard to find um the, the exact right player we have a little bit more leeway but yeah that is all very very good news a quick look at the competition screen celtic have run away with the league we have run away with second rangers have run away with third and well hibs despite uh well they've pretty much run away it's very very fragmented at the top half of this table actually is not so we play hibs today with nothing riding on it except sending jake uh, eastwood out on a high let's have a quick look and see what we're doing here uh four four one one is what we're expecting from them this is a team what we're sending out we are looking towards next season a little bit here with this selection um there's a few players that are a little bit tied c coming into it so actually you know what I've, i think i want to go bermude as 
I'm not convinced if we're going to keep Hardy. He is club trained. We saw last episode we had a couple of decent prospects coming through. He's not. He's frustrating because mentally and physically he's not. He's worth keeping, but he's just technically rubbish. He's like me if I was a professional footballer back in the day. Physically and mentally, fine. Doesn't know how to kick a football straight. So I don't know if we're going to keep him. I don't think I want to give him game time here. Uh, so this is the team anyway. Eastwood, for one last time, goes in goal. It's Vazquez, Magliori, Bernard, and Montano. It could be a final game for Montano. He has interest in it. We we, uh, we saw we extended his contract with a higher uh, sell-out clause, but it is still there. So it might be the last time we see him. It's, it's out of our hands at this point. If the club comes in, he wants to go, then he'll do just that. Irving's going to play as a deep-line playmaker. I just want to give him a chance to play that position, see how he goes. Harding is going to be the box-to-box -box man. Should be more than capable of doing that for us. It's going to be Shakir Omar Bermudez. Bayless as the inside forward on the on, uh, right footer on the left. I just want to see how he goes out there. This is just a little bit of an experiment to see if it's a position that we could look to use him in or if we're going to have to look to use him probably more as a box-to-box -box if this is indeed the way we're going to go moving forward. And Sildic will be the striker. Um, yeah, just because, why not? All right, so we can see the team sheets there. And of course, the other farewell we might have today is Shakir Omar. That is in Atalanta's hands, and there's not much we can we can do about it. Uh, all right, we're on a good run. Let's keep that going. Pump our fists and finish the season on a high, please, boys. And out we go. And yeah, let's hope that we can finish on a high. Send Eastwood out with a clean sheet, and Shakir Omar, if he could get himself a farewell hat trick, hopefully that may not be a farewell, but... The issue we have, and I've, I've mentioned it before, it's not just the transfer fee, it's the wages. He wants, last time we, we got to the point of uh, of negotiating a contract with him, he wanted 40 grand a week, which is, at the time anyway, was just way, way out of our price range, and I suspect that might still be the case. Bayless with a ball forward, looking for Suljic's run. Oh, a little bit of a miscommunication there, but they get away with it. And let's see where we can go from here. Montano can't get a tackle in. And here they come again. We're expecting Hibs to be a counter-attacking side. And they have been in good form. They've beat, I think they beat Rangers. They beat Celtic, I think. Oh, Eastwood. Classic Eastwood there with a good save. Let's encourage them. Uh, yeah, so they, they've been in good form themselves. It wouldn't surprise me, actually, if they were uh, maybe even first in the form table. if Because we drew Celtic, didn't we? I can't remember if they beat Celtic, but they, anyway, they've been finishing the season on a real high, so it's it's going to be a tough one for us. And, you know, we are a little bit in experimentation mode as well as Celtic take the lead against Rangers. Just, you know, just seeing how things go. I think what our actual strongest team right now, we'd have Davenport as the, as the deep-lying playmaker. I'm not completely binning off the usual formation, but I'm just wondering if this might particularly against Celtic, this might be a way for us to play that that works. So, you know, we need to constantly be looking to evolve the way we play. And, yeah, as if you have any thoughts, you know, let me know. But I just thought we saw, I saw enough against Celtic when we tried it to make me think, oh, it might actually work. And, it, you know, we've played two games and won two games with it. There's a good ball out for Montano. Whips the cross in. It's a header and it's just wide from Bayless. It does it does unbalance the squad a little bit if we are going to play like this. Because obviously we're going to need to, at a minimum, get somebody in to be the new Shakir Omar if we can't get him back. And we're going to have way too many central midfielders because we sort of had enough central midfielders in the squad to play with three. If that's going to get dropped back to two, then obviously we've got a bit of an overload there. We did offer an extension to McPherson for another year or two. He only wanted about two grand a week, so that seemed a bit of a no-brainer to do. There's a good ball for Bayless. Can he pull it back? He can. It's Siljic. Oh, he's missed it. I think that ball landed at the other side of the English border, didn't it? Absolutely smacked it. And... Well, still, we don't have a shot on target. We've got Clockety on the bench. We haven't seen him for a little while. I'm just letting him play in the uh, in the youth team, just, you know, develop out of the spotlight for a little bit. Uh, what we might do is give him a game here in the second half, see how he gets on. Um, I'm going to say Andy Irving isn't 
Oh, he's not playing badly. He's just he's just nervous and frustrated and all the things you don't really want in there. Harding's not having a great game, but if I'm honest, he played well against... Uh, I don't like what I've just seen there. We can do better. Uh, yeah, go out there and prove that you have what it takes to make the difference. And we will get out there. Bayless is doing okay. You'd expect Bayless to do okay. He's just one of those sorts of players, isn't he? Uh, let's try demand more. See if we can get uh, get this goal. All right, so let's bring Lutz. Oh, let's see what happens with this first. Omar crossing. Oh, it's away. Suljic was lurking. And here we go again. Irving. Irving actually wants to play. Or he's, he, he naturally is a deep line playmaker. So it should work. Shakir Omar has done well there. Can he pull it back? He chips it in. Bayless with a header. Tell you what, that was quite close in the end, wasn't it? All right, we're going to make changes here. We are going to... Let me think here. Okay, so we're just going to make one sub. We're going to take Bayless off and bring Cockerty on. But we've sort of moved the other players around. So we're going to have a look at Bermudez on his left foot, cutting in from the right there. We're going to try him there. Sordic will drop back in and Shakiro Ma will switch sides, basically. And we'll see if we get any sort of reaction from that. And then if not, we have McGrath on the bench, Lutzi on the bench as well, who could come on. But uh, yeah, it's, it's not been a classic end to the season, has it? Harding's not having a great game. All right, so let's take him off and let's get uh, McGrath on for him. And all right, so let's, let's try raising the tempo, not looking for overlaps. Playing like that had worked quite well for us previously, but obviously it's not uh, it's not quite happened for us. Here we've got a free kick. Bermudez chips it in. Magliori, is he onside? No. I think that would have been a first goal for the club. I don't remember him scoring before, but... Oh, he's only just. Pocket, he's, the one. <laughs> he's, a, he's a mile off. But uh, anyway. All right. Montano with a throw. Will it be the last time we see him? Let's hope not. He is really developing nicely. Clockety, Suljic, back to Bernard. Trying to draw Hibbs out, I suspect. McGrath to Omar, all the way back again to Magliori. Vazquez, who's had a quiet game. Magliori, all the way back to Eastwood. I wonder, actually, if we get a penalty. I should have him on penalty, shouldn't I? Shakir Omar across. Bermudez, oh, it's going to get sent off. So they're going to be down to 10 men. Now, we saw against St. Mirren last episode. It doesn't necessarily mean anything. McGrath's run across to pick up the ball. And let's see if we can make this count. Well, not from there. We can't. Let's give it a focus. Is there a goal in this game for us? It doesn't appear so as of yet. Come on, guys. Is there anything? Well, that's just what you want final day of the season. A nice nil-nil draw. Eastwood does say farewell with a clean sheet. Let's hope that Shakir Omar's back. Let's hope Montano's still here. But uh, yeah, a bit of a disappointing way to end the season. So Eastwood bids farewell to Queen of the South. Celtic unbeaten. We've got 2.5 million in the bank. That is that is from, from the league. And then we should have a little bit more cash to come from the Champions League, I would think, once that's wrapped up, sort of the end of season money there. We should have some TV money coming in, I would imagine. Uh, one thing I should actually point out with Rangers... It's that they've got to make the final of the Europa Conference League. So they'll be facing Newcastle there. So that'll be an interesting game. See how they get on. Uh, but that wraps up the league season for us. It's, uh, it's been a decent one. But um, yeah, we still need to iron out a few things on this tactic, don't we? Anyway, guys, wait right there. We'll be back for the end of season awards and see, among other things, who you guys voted your viewers player of the year. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Queen of the South end of season awards. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you and welcome to the Queen of the South End of Season Awards. And, well, it's been another really, really promising season here in Dumfries, hasn't it? We, uh, well, tell you what, Celtic fans have one thing, right? There's only one team in Glasgow these days. And uh, we seem to have seen off Rangers. Hopefully that continues. A knockout round of the Champions League as well. The guys have outperformed themselves. So let's uh, give them a big round of applause to thank them for their efforts. And particularly Jake Eastwood, mate, you're going to be missed. Good luck in Reading. 
Well, the first award this evening is the Golden Pen, awarded to this season's signing of the season. And, uh, well, there's a number. I think we've made some really good signings this year. But this guy's up there as good as any of them. 350 grand from Liverpool. Congratulations, Oliver Gilchrist. The next award is the Golden Card, awarded to the player with the worst discipline. And I think if you win the award three years running, we just give you, we name it after you. So I think we'll have to uh, look at renaming the Golden Card for next season. 14 yellow cards. It's the club captain, Jacob Davenport. The next award is the Golden Bullseye for the uh, player this season with the best pass completion rate. And, uh, well, this guy, I think, has named this award after himself as well. But uh, we won't be renaming it. With a 97% pass completion, it is Deshaun Bullseye Bernard. The next award is the Golden Spoon, awarded to the man who feeds the strikers, the player with the most assists. And, uh, well, this guy was a very good, solid, reliable player for us all season long. Ten assists he got in the end. The Golden Spoon goes to Andy Irving. The next award is the Golden Anchor, awarded to the player we can rely on, the man with the highest average match rating. And this guy, hopefully it's not the last time we see him in a uh, Queen of the South shirt, but if it is, he's left us with a lot of good memories and uh, some good match ratings as well. So congratulations, the Golden Anchor, with an average rating of 7.36, goes to Shakia Omar. The next award is the Golden Cross, awarded to this season's most injured player. And, uh, well, this guy, we missed him when he was injured, but he was a rock for most of the season. 24% of the season he missed in the end. So congratulations, go to... Andrew Walker. The next award is the Golden Soother, awarded to this season's baby of the team, the best young player. And I go on about it every season, it feels like. When you're 23, 24 years old, you shouldn't be. If you're in your 20s, you shouldn't be able to win this award. I should just give my own award, really. It's my team, it's my game, I can do what I want. But anyway, the Golden Soother for this season goes to... Shakia Omar. Shakia made if you come back next season, you can have whatever award you want. Uh, okay, the next award is the Golden Boot, awarded to this season's top goal scorer. And actually, Shakia, don't go too far there, mate. Uh, this guy, he wins it most years, but funnily enough, not last season. But 22 goals he got this year. The Golden Boot goes to, once again, please stay... Shakia Omar. The next award is the Horses Arse for an achievement of, let's say, lesser use uh, throughout the season. And, well, I couldn't really give anything for on-field performances this season. But uh, one thing that did set us back was uh, a certain squad member upsetting the entire dressing room, trying to turn them against me because he wasn't picked in the Champions League squad. So for that, the horse's ass this season is Cameron McPherson. And now it is time to award this season's Viewers Player of the Year, an award that means a lot to the players I know, and uh, I take it to heart as well. So I do just want to thank everybody who nominated and voted this season, uh, but the player you have voted as your Viewers Player of the Year is... Shakia Omar. Now, before we get to announcing this season's Player of the Year, we do need to acknowledge the team of the season. So if you direct your eyes up to the screen, you will see that for one final time, the goalkeeper was Jake Eastwood. Your back four is Ramos, Walker, Bernard and Gilchrist. Perhaps a surprise there. The midfield trio are Irving, Davenport and Bayless. The number 10 is Bermudez. And the strikers are Fabian Lutzi and Shakir Omar. Congratulations, guys. You've all had wonderful, wonderful seasons. And Montano, you've been rocking. 
And now it is time for the big one to award the Golden Star for this season's Player of the Year. And I don't know what more we can do to try and convince this guy this is where he wants to play his football next season. He's been magnificent, scored goals, assists, average ratings, the whole deal. So the Golden Star for this season and every season, it appears, is... Shakir, please stay, Omar. Congratulations, Shakir. Congratulations to Shakir and the rest of the winners this evening. It's been, as I said at the top, a magical season. We really couldn't have dreamt it to go much better. Maybe winning the league, but that's a bit of a far-fetched dream just now. And knockout rounds of Europe. Can we dare dream of doing that again? We'll find out. It's going to be a busy summer here at Palmerston Park. A lot of effort will be going into making sure Shakir Omar's back next season. Just sign now, mate. I'm going to pest you all summer otherwise. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll have an even stronger side, some more wonder kids, and a team that starts to strike the fear into the heart of Celtic fans everywhere. So thank everybody who came out to the auditorium this evening. Thank you for you watching at home, and I'll see you all again next season at Palmerston Park. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. So there we go, end of season awards done for another season. So let's quickly review season as it was. Uh, the new signings, it was uh, Gilchrist who won signing of the year, 350 grand from Liverpool. He does look like he could be decent, doesn't he? Uh, only a C rated uh, though by the board. Magliori a B minus. I don't know how much we'll see of him next season. It's going to depend on what we do over the summer, but definitely a worthy addition, I think, with that uh, with that pace. He gives us something different. Eddie Johnson was a C signing. We'll see more of him next season. Six goals from four starts. Those suggest we might see good things. Vital, he came, he conquered, he left. He will be leaving us, but a B minus. McKellar on loan was a C plus. Would we look to sign him permanently? Um... It would depend on the fee, I think. I'm not convinced he's quite up to the standard that we need now for a permanent signing. Vazquez is a C signing. I think he'll do well for us. Santizo, we've got another one, the kid. Look at that. Santizo won the kid. He is a B minus, but look at how well he's training on. And well, a second one, the kid to go alongside Montano now at the club is excellent news. Ramos, a little bit like Vitale, he came, he conquered, he's leaving again, so a B minus, he is rated, and Harding, another one from Liverpool with 350 grand, only a C signing, I think he's going to he's gonna prove himself to be a very useful player. Now, of the outs, did anybody go on and do anything? McCallum played 10 games after his £10 million move, uh, Marshall, how's he getting on at Hamilton? He's not really playing, it's such a shame, I thought he was going to be decent when he came through. Reese Lyon went to Plymouth, played a lot, good to see, uh, McKenna, Went off the hull, did okay. Melbourne played a lot at Oxford. Summers didn't really play for Wimbledon. Lewis Smith, is that the, he was a winger, wasn't he? I actually wouldn't mind getting him back now. I wish we still had him, but he's gone off to Livingston and did okay. Livingston, I think, got promoted again. Uh, Hamilton played when he left in January. Mickey Mellon didn't really play for Dunfermline. Uh, Goss didn't really play for Hull. Augusto didn't play at all for Sheffield Wednesday, and McCall McAllister's still a free agent. No, we've moved past him. It's not worth signing him back. And Colby Bishop, no one picked him up either. That, that does surprise me. He was quite decent, but you'd imagine he'll find himself a club over the summer. Uh, let's have a look at season results. Uh, we got a B- minus for the league. I mean, we did quite well, didn't we? I mean, that's We've got more points than we got last year. I'm almost positive. We only lost three games all year. And they were three of the times we played Celtic. And then, of course, we got a nil-nil against Celtic uh, last episode. So if you take Celtic out of this league, we're the dominant force in it. It's just unfortunate that uh, we're a mile off Celtic. Uh, the Champions League first knockout round, if that's only a B plus and I'm not here, that was an amazing effort to get out of that group. So I'm a little bit annoyed, actually. That should be an A+. Plus. Uh, Scottish Cup, disappointing, wasn't it? We lost that one. And the bet, Fred, we lost to Celtic uh, in the semi-final. We go to moments to remember. The biggest win was a 6-1 against Wraith. Uh, the match to remember was a 1-0 win against Dynamo Kiev. I'd argue a 1-0 win against the defending European champions. But, you know, I'm just the manager. What do I know? Got all the season as given by the game was Shakir Omar's effort against Ross County. We'll revisit that in just a second. The finances, uh, we are still a three-star reputation club. I'm hoping that'll go up because we have uh, improving the training facilities and you know we're a champions league club now as well hopefully on the regular so let's hope that that does go up everything is up financially so that's good competition prize money was up 20 million from last season and there might be more to cut although it'll be broadcast money won't it which is about the same 
So we should get TV money from the Champions League, which will boost that. Top shirt sales, uh, we saw just under 1,500 shirts. McGrath, perhaps surprisingly, was the top with Montano and Santizo, the two won the kids, Bayless and Siljic. Perhaps another surprise there as well. Team of the season, let's have a look at this. Given how we're lining up here, well, obviously, Davenport, Irving, and Baylor should be in different positions in that, but... And not no Montano at right back. Maybe because he played a little bit on both sides, but that is essentially the team of the season, isn't it? I don't have too many... Uh, yeah, too many disagreements with that at all. That, I think, is more or less the team I picked when I had the choice of what team to pick. The accolades. Oh, the accolades. Fans player of the year for Shakir Omar. Hopefully not the final time. He also won young player of the year, but I've ranted enough about how I feel about 23-year-old winning that. Gilchrist was signing of the year. Goal of the season we're coming back to. Top goal scorer once again was Shakir Omar. Uh, assist merchant was the golden spoon went to Andy Irving. Most man of the match awards, we don't give it out, but nine for Shakir Omar. Was that a club record? It must be close. It was a club record. So well done to him. Uh, he won the golden anchor for average rating, and Davenport was most passes completed per 90 minutes. He's an underrated player for us. I've clicked on the thing. We're not going to get back into it now, are we? Uh, but yeah, he's an underrated player. Oh, no, we can go back into it now. Uh, the uh, record, Shakir Omar's four goals was a record. Now, that was in Champions League, wasn't it? I've got a Mackie statue, actually. We'll have to commission that over the summer. Uh, we have got uh, Suljic with uh, most goals in a league game with a hat trick. And you can see their highest transfer fee paid. I'd like to think we'll break that this summer. Uh, the highest transfer fee received... Just make it 10 million for the sake of it. And the fastest goal was broken by Siljic this season as well. Competition awards. The Riders young player was Lutzi. And the Scottish Riders, the Scottish players young player was Andrew Walker. So all very good news there. So that is that. You can see the best 11. But we'll come back to that momentarily. Uh, where are they now? Is this from our first? It's Harry Cochran's at uh, Halifax Town. Is there anybody else there of note? Connor Bray, uh, Brady is still at Mallorca. Uh, Rory Patton is at Millwall, and uh, Bishop and Ali Roy, uh, we just saw they are unattached with a number of players still at the club. So that is that season in review. We just did that, and uh, aside from 2021, did we not just do that as well? Oh, that was the best 11, and the side of 2021, well, there it is there. If you want to have a bit of a longer look, just give it a quick pause. Season performance, I don't necessarily care about that. That's just one for the Boffins. Uh, expectations and vision, is there anything there? Make the most of set pieces. I don't think we've ever actually worked on doing that. Champions League reached the playoffs. We've got training facilities. Looking to sell the club. Well, that could go either way, couldn't it? Uh, in the league, we want to reach the Europa, qualify for the Europa Conference League. So that's, that's fourth or higher, isn't it? So that should be an absolute... Snack. We'll should do that without any problems. Team dynamics. Now we know Eastwood is leaving. Shakir Omar may not be able to come back, which leaves us with Davenport as a team leader. Hopefully, we've got a lot of highly influential players. They'll be able to step up. Now, Walker may well find himself, if he's not club captain, he'll certainly be vice captain next season. So he needs to step into a leadership role. And hopefully there'll be somebody else there that'll do that for us as well. Uh, end of season team meeting, we'll do off camera. New season team report, we'll have a little bit more of a look at that at uh, next episode, Summer Transfer Special. But we can see there, there's not much wrong with the squad certainly at a squad uh, at a at a premiership squad level anyway um injury reports there wasn't too many injuries really was there it looks like walker as the first team player would have got the uh the golden cross for that for his uh his groin strain four injuries in total and the season squad break they'll be back early uh late june and that is that. So this brings us now to the goal of the season competition. The way this works, very similar to um, to the Burning for Viewers Player of the Year. There's a link in the description down below. Click on that. It'll take you through to a straw poll. There's going to be the goal that the game gave, plus three others I deem worthy of goal of the season. So make sure you vote for which one you think is the favourite, and I'll announce that winner earlier next season. And, uh, well, there'll be a couple of... Uh, couple of goals to whet the appetite before that a few honorable mentions so until next time i've been ozzy villain thank you so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and uh yeah i'll see you for a summer transfer special take care
here are our top four goals from the 26-27 season. Don't forget to vote for your favourite.